You got that oatmeal mouth still? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll get to it. There used to be a way to stick it to the man. It was called rock and roll. But guess what? Oh, no. The man ruined that, too, with a little thing called MTV! Don't talk to me about rock and roll. I'm not there in the clubs and on the streets, and I'm living it. I am rock and roll! Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? So we're going to talk about an album that I got you to listen to because I knew Jordan would not like it. So I, I like give you the stuff that's... This is Mark, by the way. Mark's been on a couple times. I think last time you were on was Death Cab, maybe? That or might Foxing. have been a little, Oh, I think Death Cab was... They were around the same time, I think. It's been a while. Yeah. I think I listened to both of those records on my road trip this summer, though. So they were within a couple weeks. It's been a while, though. It's been a while, but Mark's back, so we're going to talk about Valley Hearts. Everyone I've ever loved. It sounds so nice. It sounds so nice. So, um, have you ever loved anyone? Yeah, <laughs> sure. It took me a second. <laughs> I had to think about that. The funny thing about the title of this record is that when I think about it, it, it clearly has one consistent theme through the whole record. Now, whether... You could say he's telling a story from, you know, a, a beginning and middle and an end, or if it's just that every song kind of deals with his same sort of inner struggle. Um, who knows? But I don't know what it has to do with everyone he's ever loved, except for the part where he mentions that once on the album. So I don't know, kind of interesting. But what were your initial thoughts on this album? Um, obviously that like religious through line. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's kind of a You're making that up. Although honestly the second time I heard it, mm -hmm. I was it was almost like I it was new to me that that was what it was all about. Okay, so you're saying like the first time you heard it you didn't realize that or and then the second time you heard it you did realize it or the second time you heard it you knew that but it didn't feel like it was it just became like even more prominent the second right time. like okay. oh there was maybe some references i almost like missed i sure. certainly got it the first time yeah but yeah. the second time was like oh yeah for yeah. like it just became more apparent yeah so if if you haven't listened to the record yet it's very obvious that um lyrically this album is about and and so with valley heart on their because this is their debut full-length record on their ep I thought there was some mention where I was like, "Oh, I wonder if I wonder if this like if these guys not necessarily there's that there's that like there's an age old sort not age old but an old thing where bands would say, "Well, we're not a Christian band, we're Christians in a band sort of things or how can a band be Christian this kind of line." But with that with the first record anyway, I was like the EP I was noticing I was like, "Well, there's a a, a fair amount of mention of you know, like Christian themes, spiritual themes on that record. And then so when this record came out, I was like, okay, it obviously seems like this album is about a guy struggling with his faith. And from what I can gather from listening to, you know, the album and the lyrics is that he grew up, I want to say, in a Christian home. And now as he's grown up, he's he's questioning that, but not just questioning it. Like it feels like it's really weird how the record's laid out because it feels like by the end of it, he kind of comes to the conclusion that, yeah, he doesn't really believe anymore. And then the last song plays, which is like this really, when I first heard it, it was like, this is weird because it's basically the song Jesus Loves Me, except he's rewit re rewitten it. He's rewritten it uh, lyrically to the point where, you know, he's he does in the end say like, yeah, he, he's asking at one point, do you still love me? And then it, I think he says at one point, he says, they say you still love me. And then I think at the end, he kind of comes a bit to that conclusion, but also sounds like heartbroken at that conclusion. Like he doesn't, maybe it's just like, he doesn't feel that he's worthy of being loved, if that makes sense. But then like the instrumental out on that song all of a sudden feels very hopeful. It's this weird sort of i guess like contradiction in how the song is delivered um and then this instrumental outro that all of a sudden feels very like i said like hopeful so i don't know if it's supposed to be as an album like telling this story where this guy comes to this realization that what he's believed his whole life he no longer believes anymore and whether or not he's okay with that and then lyrically in that last song he kind of goes regardless of what i believe you know, he's, he's saying that Jesus still loves him sort of thing. And then, but again, feeling almost like heartbroken by 
letting him down sort of it's just i don't know that's what confused me about the record because for the most part it sounded very straightforward like oh yeah he's writing songs about you know like i said believing something as a kid and no longer believing it anymore and where does that sit with him internally and then this last song where i'm like oh i still don't know <laughs> like there was there was no closure except for this like hopeful sounding music i guess at the end of it but um when i i had this this thought or this question pop into my brain to ask you when you're listening to music because when we talked about this before sitting down and recording you had you had brought that up that theme up and i was like okay so yeah like to me it's it is an obvious theme but when you listen to music what are you listening to first and foremost is it lyrics do you analyze lyrics at all or is it just kind of like music vocals uh, an entire package like what kind of draws you into what you're listening to yeah i'd say for me it's more the entire package like i rare i think for me to get the themes of an album mm -hmm. you have to really hit it on the you have to really like right go after it so i think for me the fact that i like picked up what the album was about yeah just shows just how like yeah it was it was pretty much impossible to miss but i i, I usually just yet yeah, everything like if there's like a catchy hook, you know, yeah. but I, I, I don't, I, I rarely dissect the music I'm listening to. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting because with this with this record, I think, as you mentioned, like the lyrical theme is obvious, but I don't think he. So I, I was when listening to it, I was kind of comparing it to an album called "Curse Your Branches" by um, David Bazan, who I don't know if you've listened to him or not. His his old band, which is now back together, is called Pedro the Lion, and he had this section of time where he was just releasing music under his name of David Bazan. And then I guess he came to the realization. He's like, it's all the same. Why did I walk away from, you know, a, a name I'd built sort of deal. Anyway, the album curse your branches is he's, he has come out and said like, that's a breakup song or a breakup album from him to God sort of thing. Right? Like he grew up, Dave Bazan grew up in a Christian home. I think his dad was a pastor sort of thing and grew up believing that, went through you know a phase where i think he, he definitely still believed that but was also uh, i think i read a review that described one of his records as like wearing his sin on his sleeve sort of thing like didn't shy away from being real in his music while still referencing or writing songs about god sort of thing and then you know over time he kind of started to reevaluate i suppose and i don't know if I've read or seen a thing where he flat out says he's an atheist type deal or an agnostic or whatever, but he, you know, kind of eventually walked away from that faith and wrote this album, Curse Your Branches, where he said, this is a breakup album between me and God, which I thought was interesting because if he is now, you know, claiming to be an atheist, does it seem counterintuitive to write an album directed towards someone or something a being that you no longer believe exists like when i was like thinking when i really started to think about this breakup album with god now that he's you know claiming to be an atheist or whatever i'm like but does that make sense wouldn't you just like be like you don't exist why are you writing such personal songs directed towards you know god but anyway with him being so forward about what that record was about i had some of those same thoughts with with this record with valley heart except I don't know that at any point he says on the album that he for sure doesn't believe anymore. Right? Like, so it could either be this transitional thing or if it's more like a, not necessarily a breakup album with God, but like a breakup album with the church. Cause if I recall, there's a song on here where, um, and I'm going to, I'm probably going to get it wrong. Maybe it's this song. I got to find the lyrics, but, um, I feel like there was a song where he basically says, uh, I don't want to speak out and not be right, but I thought there was a song where he basically says the the preacher sounds like an asshole, <laughs> which I I thought was interesting to just kind of point out. And so when I heard that, oh yeah, um, have we been fooled? Now I hear the preacher who speaks from your screen. He sounds like an asshole with words of prosperity. Oh, okay, so that particular line, he's speaking about people who are banking on the prosperity gospel, which I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically it's the idea that you become a Christian and God wants to give you money sort of thing. And all your finances and all that kind of stuff will be taken care of. And a lot of guys, televangelists will get on 
TV and make money this way, right? Like, uh, and lots of money. And so when I heard that line, I wasn't sure if he was specifically speaking. Like, that becomes more obvious that it's like someone on TV um, and a televangelist sort of thing. But it was like this vibe that I got. I was like, is it a breakups, breakup album with God or just purely with the church? And what the church has kind of come to stand for, I suppose, in recent years and he's not aligning himself with that but there's very much a, a personal spiritual journey going on i think he's it's may maybe more of like um if this is if the church has it right in the way that they've been presenting themselves in recent years in regards to what the bible says and this is how they're supposed to be if he's saying i don't know if i believe that does that make sense yeah i mean to me it sounds like he's just become a little disenchanted with yeah. religion yeah or God, just yeah. There's just there was not just, one or the other. Yeah, and not necessarily a breakup. Yeah, but like he's he, just less convinced, or his he's definitely like his faith is taking a bit of a yeah, a he bit of a hit. Sure, and and I mean he definitely he definitely says that there were just a few lines where I was like, okay, now he's not just taking a jab at God, sure. per se, and his and his struggle with belief at this point, but taking a jab at church and church culture. Um, cause there's even a line in there where is now you're talking all macho, which I, I feel is again, directed at the church versus directed at God, where a lot of the songs do seem to be like, this is the person I've become. And I don't know if, you know, my own moral code or whatever, what I've been raised to believe, I don't know if I appreciate and support what I've become. There's even a line on, um, one of, one of the earlier songs um, I think it's friends in the foyer actually, which, which was, first of all, I had to like give a hard time because he says friends in the foyer, yeah, which drives me crazy, but he, he also rhymes it with the word alter. So I'm like, okay. Um, but in that song, he says, uh, I remember laughing with them, our friends in the forest and that house on a mountain. And in that cabin, we got real drunk. And on the ride back to Boston, I weeped as I questioned the men and the women we'd become. I'm like, I think that's like kind of a, a rough or not a rough, but like a brief synopsis about what this record is about in general, like the person that he's become. I think he's struggling with being, this is who I am now. Would me as, you know, a zealous 15 year old be okay with that. And the beliefs that I had then and that I was raised with sort of deal. And then he tells a very prodigal son story. And in fact, there is a, a, a song where he refers to himself as the prodigal son you know, being like, I think it's like the, the prophets basically telling him to come home, right? And just this inner struggle that he constantly has. And I know, like, I mean, I grew up in the church and I know a number of people who would probably jump right on board with lyrically what he's saying on this album because you get to a certain age where you start making decisions for yourself and you start questioning, you know, those things that you were raised to believe and... um so it's this really, I, I always find interest in albums that kind of go down that route, you know, because as a kid, you don't really, I mean, you're curious as a kid, right? Like curiosity gets the best of kids all the time and they get into trouble doing things that you, as an adult, you kind of go, well, that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but you learn from that, right? So, I mean, kids are often curious, but I don't know about your own childhood, but for myself, like being raised in a, in a Christian home and whatever, and like, I never really questioned that until I got older, right? Like, and then you start kind of looking at that. So when I see albums of guys that are clearly going through that, there's always a bit of a tug for me where I'm like, oh, I, I, I can appreciate, I suppose, what they're walking through, and I, I find it interesting and it draws me in. Um, again, I don't, I don't know what your, your childhood was like. I've only known you for a couple of years, Mark, mm -hmm. um, and we don't need to get into that. But um, yeah, I just found that that common theme running through the album. I think I was maybe surprised at just how it was in every song, you know? Yeah, it really was. Yeah, like, again, it, it, it really hit you in the face. Yeah. You didn't really have to, like, dissect the lyrics. Yeah. I heard the album twice. Yeah. And it was, again, you could probably listen to it once and be like, oh, this yeah. is clearly yeah. what the whole thing is. I mean, it may take you a few songs to really be yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. Like, like this is what it's song. all yeah, about. It's like, all this is, about this. I mean, but the, the, the last one is just kind of the icing on the cake of yeah. like, again, it may confuse you a little bit, but to, to be like, oh, this is clearly someone who's struggling with his faith, like yeah. to say the very least. 
And it's interesting because you can either take that song, that last song, as the way he sings it, because I because I do believe he says in there like, "Yes, you still love me," sort of thing. Um, so it it either be it, it's easy enough to take it as like, you know, like okay, yeah, he's he's come to terms, I suppose, because it goes like, uh, "Do you still love me?" And they sing, "He still loves me." Um, and then, oh, I guess I don't know if he does actually say, "Yes, you still love me." Oh, it says you still love me. It says you still love me, despite the man I've been. Just help me let you win. So, like, in the end, it kind of like come. You could you could either take that as a conclusion, like he's come to terms with his faith and what he's believed his entire childhood, and he still believes in it, even though he's gone through this struggle. Or you can take it like the way he sings it and delivers those lines as more like disappointed not that he's like but like disappointed that he's come to the conclusion that he believes in this but disappointed in the fact that he maybe doesn't know the answer yeah i think just asking the like do yeah. you still love me it's because yeah. it just he's he's well, not I, sure he's it's yeah because he says that he, i think he says the do you still love me at the beginning of that song so i feel like the journey happens even within that song right? sure. like the first time through the course it says do you still love me despite the man i've been um and then the second chorus he's and they sing he still loves me they sing he still loves me and then finally in the end oh it says you still love like he's kind of coming like this says you still love me but will you actually accept me regardless of what i've done sort of thing right like having still struggling i think with that and then like i said the music kind of fades there almost like that could have been the end of the song and then they kind of have this hopeful piano piece that comes in that um is it's 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 very interesting and for you know an initial like a a debut full-length album i think i can really appreciate what they put into it now they released a video for friends in the foyer or friends in the foyer and uh i do not understand the video for the slightest second it is so it's just like all this strange imagery. I should have sent you the video and got you to watch it. Instead, I sent you Julian Baker videos, who, who also writes about her struggle with faith as well, which is kind of interesting. But um, by the way, Julian Baker's fantastic. We should review some Julian Baker sometime. Yeah. Anytime I like come back to it, I'm always like, oh, she's so good. She's way too good. But anyway, um, I should have sent you the video for Friends in the Foyer um, because it – I don't, I don't get it at all. If you haven't seen the video, go look it up. Valley Heart Friends in the Foyer, Foyer, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's a, it's a strange one to say, uh, to say the least. But it and it didn't answer any of my questions. I was really hoping there would be some kind of question answered there. So in the end, we've talked about obviously this album. The thing that got your attention first would be lyrics. Yeah, I'd say so. Like, what did, what did you, I guess, think of the record as, you know, kind of on a whole? It's good. I mean, there was no single track that stood out for me. I think it's yeah. interesting that, um, I mean, I kind of like that it's sort of, you almost want to listen to the album. Like, even the if you whole, just listen yeah. to the last song, yeah. you make it a different interpretation than if you listen to it in context totally. and with the entire album. So yeah. I like, it's fun when we review these albums where it's actually, like, the album needs to almost like like it's, it's all piece it's not yeah. a, it's not a collection of tracks yeah, yeah like this album was written as an album as an album yeah and I, I i appreciate that you make a very good point like if i were to be like hey man you should check out valley heart here's this song it's the and last it's, song and it's the last song and it's jesus loves me except they they disguise it because it's called uh Parad- paradisum I don't know how to say that. Par- Paradisum, P A R A D I S M. I don't know, um, but they 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 don't name it Jesus. And you're like listening to it, you'd be like, "What the heck is this? What are you making me listen to?" Right? Maybe someone would be like, "This is awesome," but it's like it's a song that's clearly written as a closer, right? Like, um, even though in my mind it does kind of it doesn't wrap up the album, it kind of almost leaves on a cliffhanger, like their next full length or even a follow up EP sort of thing may encompass a little more of that um like hit that story or whatever but uh i did have it there was a standout track on this album for me the song crave which is i believe track three and it mainly yeah track three it stands out to me simply because the chorus on it is so catchy that's the one is like um 
Remember when we were good to sit in the car and speak through the silence? I wonder if we still could in this crazy world where all we do is crave. Um, I don't know. Just anytime that, that chorus kicks in and the guitar on the verses and stuff, I just, it's, it's the standout song to me, uh, for me for sure. But yeah, it's definitely, I find, because there are even some songs that not necessarily bleed straight into each other, but they've got like an underlying, you know, whether it's like a, like a synth sound pad an organ or whatever that kind of carries into the next song. And then it, so it really kind of pulls you along through the album and, um, yeah, and then they hit you, you know, like towards the end of the album, a couple songs before the end, there's like a song where it's just him and his guitar. Uh, there's a song where it's just him and the piano. Um, they And then f- mostly full band. They really kind of, they keep enough, I suppose, of a, um, of like a peaks and valleys, but not like peaks being, oh, these songs are good and valleys being these songs are bad, but just like a rhythm that pulls you through the album. And I think with the lyrical content being what it is and being consistent from start to finish, it definitely, it, it ties it all together real nice. So um, I guess the ultimate question in this instance is now we're done reviewing it. You're no longer obliged to listen to it. Would you go back and listen to it again? Yeah, for sure. Right on. Have you gone back and listened to Foxing again? Um, which also dealt with some similar stuff actually with nearer my God. So not the whole album, but yeah. I know, um, some of the songs and Spotify makes it like a year end playlist of songs yeah, yeah. to listen to. So and foxing shows up there. What always ends up being like the, f- cause I listen, usually listen to albums. Like I'll start at the beginning yeah. and someone said, it'll finish them. Yeah. So when it's it makes like the me first this five songs, when it make makes playlists. me this year in playlist, it's like the first three tracks yeah, yeah. of every album I listen to. Yeah. Well, I, and I, I'm, I'm similar in that sense because especially if I'm like intentionally listening to something, um, a lot of times it's like, I don't have time to sit down for 40 minutes to just listen to something right out of that or the time I do have, it's like I'm lying in bed and I happen to fall asleep. So I always end up listening to the first four or five mm-hmm. tracks so many times. And then when I'm like, okay, I need to finish listening to this and reviewing the album. It's like, okay, I should start midway through the album. But um, yeah, no, this is one that I found myself wanting to go back and listen to. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, I will again um, because it does, it does a lot of great stuff on here. So uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out Valley Heart, definitely give, uh, give this record a listen. It's called Everyone I've Ever Loved. Um, it's their first full length. They do have their, the EP that they released as well. I remember, I mean, I, I pre-added this album because I really liked the EP. And when I saw this album was coming out, I was like, all right, um, I'm in. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. So if you want to find us, you can find us wherever you want to find us. We're on Facebook. Um, just look up Music to My Peers, uh, the podcast. We're on Instagram, at David to My Peers. Um, we are also uh, Blogspot, uh, our website, musicpeers.blogspot.com. And, of course, listen wherever you listen to podcasts, wherever you are listening right now. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you uh, leave some ratings and reviews, that kind of stuff. Help spread the word, as I said last time. Get us uh, Help get the podcast into your peers' ears. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Mark? You're going to share this with all your peers, Mm -hmm. all your friends, and they're going to become the biggest fans. I can tell already. So bye.